I don't know. And Tibetan old sort of government system also is too much common. I don't know. May I say a few words uh, mm, as an introduction? Yes. Uh, so, <clears throat> um, um, maybe you remember. Uh, maybe you remember uh, uh, we had a meeting uh, uh, one uh, year and uh, some more than one year ago uh, when uh, I addressed you uh, on behalf of uh, a small group of colleagues, uh, philosophers of education, uh, who started to think about uh, this initiative uh, um, of uh, human education in the third millennium. And, um, uh, when I started talk, to talk to, uh, to you, uh, then um, you answered, yes, uh, I support. And uh, when I asked about your possible participation in a dialogue, uh, in a conference, you said, yes, of course. And uh, when I asked uh, when and how it could be possible, uh, uh, you answered, uh, concerning time, I am free. I was completely shocked <laughs> to, to hear that His Holiness the Dalai Lama <laughs> is completely free for us. And uh, uh, then you suggested that uh, we would find our time and we negotiate when, uh, when to do this conference. So now this moment hmm? is happening. And uh, during this time, uh, during this uh, year and, uh, uh, and half, uh, actually we started from small group, uh, from colleagues uh, from uh, uh, Latin America, Finland, and India. And then later on, our initiative group uh, um, grew to uh, embrace uh, um, colleagues uh, from um, um, 20 uh, uh, countries. And uh, um, uh, later on, uh, we started to prepare this very conference, which is initiative conference. Uh, uh, initiative roundtable conference, and uh, now uh, colleagues uh, from 10 countries are present here. Mm. Why, uh, why we started to think about this uh, project and what is this project about? Because, um, you know, educators in the world are not satisfied with what is happening in education. <laughs> Uh, we can say that oh, uh, that is a usual case, that people are not satisfied and uh, educators never were satisfied with, uh, with what they had in education. But um, nowadays it is becoming even worse and worse, comparing with, uh, with previous decades. And true, true. And uh, uh, that became a great question for us, for us uh, as philosophers of, edu of education. What is happening? Mm -hmm. And we feel ourselves as a voices of those educators. We are their voices to, to start to think over what is happening in education. What are the causes of this? And uh, it isn't only education that is... Uh, all civilization. Uh, it is a uh, problem of what is happening in civilization today. But education is very important for, for civilization. That's why we, uh, we got this idea to start to prepare a world forum of uh, human education in the third millennium. And this small conference, this roundtable conference, is the initial one to initiate this world forum uh, to invite colleagues uh, from all countries of the world, those who are really concerned with the situation, not those who are officially obliged to go somewhere to the conference, but those who are really... That is, uh, that is uh, uh, what is our aim, what is our real aim today for this uh, initial roundtable conference. Wonderful. And now um, uh, I want to, uh, to introduce you um, to the agenda of our roundtable conference. Uh, the, uh, this is four topics. Educational policy, uh, democracy, hum uh, being human. Hmm? What does it mean, being human? And education, pedagogy. And uh, during last seven months, uh, we all together among our group mm. were uh, working on elaborating uh, the main questions for us. 
So now uh, I give the word uh, to uh, Moderator General Scott uh, Webster from Australia, from Deakin University, Melbourne, uh, to introduce you into this, uh, this very topic. You not yet start. Uh, you not uh, speak your own sort of thinking. Not yet. It's my job, uh, your, your um, honor, to uh, give you a summary of some of the things that we've been talking about and then to uh, invite you to respond some questions okay. uh, that we've had. Uh, but I'd just like to begin by... Um, is that switch on? Oh, this is working. Um, by thanking you for uh, the hospitality that you've extended to us. Uh, in particular, uh, Geshe Lagdor, who's been a wonderful uh, engaging participant in uh, helping our forum to get together. And so we uh, really appreciate your presence sharing our common concerns for education and especially for the younger generation. So as uh, Margarita has flagged, we've looked at four main areas out of concern for education because we do see things as getting worse. Mm -hmm. As Margarita mentioned, we're from 10 different countries and we're all experiencing the same sorts of concerns where schooling and universities are focusing specifically on knowledge, skills to get jobs, to serve the economy. Not that we have a problem with that, but because that's become exclusive and human flourishing is receiving a negative impact as a result of all that. So in our discussions, what I'd like to share with you is some of the highlights as philosophers and sociologists that we've been sharing, grappling with, trying to understand, and therefore to share with you some of your thoughts mm. in responding to these. So I'd like to just bring you up to date with uh, just touching on about nine hours of conversations that we've already had. And the first one, we're looking at policy. Policies are understood as uh, the authoritative application of particular values. And our concern that those values are privileging work, working for the economy. And all the students are learning to become good workers, but not necessarily good human beings. And so we're concerned with the privileging of some values and the loss of other values, in particular, equality and emancipation, uh, what it means to be human, and it's all being reduced to what it is to be a worker. And so the whole notion of becoming an educated human being is being contested. One of the uh, big influences that people are struggling with is that education has been reduced to learning as a form of something that can be measured. We talk about international league tables and examinations, and different countries are competing to be number one. And it's an environment where teachers can't teach in a creative way, but they're being held accountable to how successful their students are in international competition. Um, and so we're becoming concerned that what is uh, being lost is this whole notion of education, particularly human education and its relation to justice, etc. So we see that one of the tensions we have is, is almost a fight or a conflict that we have as educators in terms of policy. Policies tend to be written by governments and also by a lot of people in the commercial world from businesses. But not very often people like ourselves as professional educators. It's like we haven't had a voice. So one of the attempts that we're doing, as Margarita's pointed out, is to bring ourselves together as an international community to try and address this power imbalance, this silence of the voices we have, because globally, there's a lack of voices being able to speak 
about what is human flourishing, what is valuable about being a part of the vast ecosystem in which we find ourselves. Um, so that was one of the areas we're looking at was policy. A second area was uh, being human. And there's different understandings of being human, and these seem to be the foundations of different approaches to education. So we become very concerned with the current emphasis mm -hmm. on reducing the human being to an economic unit, one who can participate in the workforce and one who spends money and consumes in a consumerist life. And what is absent is uh, living a meaningful life and being motivated and coming to value what might be meaningful. Um, so we're all agreed that while knowledge and skills have a place, education must go beyond that to strive not just to instill values, but for people to come to actually value them as such. So it's a movement away from the current practices of education, which reduce things in assessment to measurement, competition, and these, we feel, as educators, need to be confronted. Mm -hmm. So while we find ourselves here in a forum where we do a lot of discussion, a lot of debate, we still are concerned with taking action. Action which may be interpreted as a form of confrontation, confronting current practices. And through that, um, one of the things that we need to confront is how the definition of a human being is being changed. Through recent technology, uh, we are having human persons as bodies engaging with uh, computers, technologies, and we could argue that on some levels, the human being is becoming better in terms of faster, stronger, mm -hmm. able to live longer, replacing human organs, replacing human limbs, and we could talk about a certain form of betterment of a human being. And indeed, the very nature of being human might be undergoing a lot of change. But what is absent and may be deliberately avoided is what might be referred to as a potential sacredness of being human, the spiritual dimension of what it means to be a human being not as an economic unity, but as a member of a social group responsible for each other, not just as a small community uh, competing with others, but uh, on a universal level. And so one of the things that we've recognized and we really value through the collaboration that we've had is rather than reaching answers of what human nature and human being Kusa. might be. Oh. So rather than reaching answers and conclusions, we found that there might be great value in terms of education in leaving them as questions. And so it's the process of engaging these issues as questions rather than arriving or striving for particular answers. And so that was uh, our second area of looking at the human being. The third area was democracy. And in our deliberations, an awful lot of passion and uh, enthusiasm was expressed because through different understandings of democracy, the thing that we did share is that it seemed to reflect human dignity, and terms such as freedom, inclusiveness, equity, and justice seem to come together with this term of democracy. And we were looking at democracy in two different ways. One, maybe the more common sense way, is a form of government, how um, decisions are made through deliberation, etc. Another way we're looking at democracy is a form of cultural life, the way that we relate together. Uh, and hence, it's a moral way of being. To be democratic is to be sensitive to the views of others in the activities that we take.
So we found the whole notion of democracy very attractive, and yet we recognized that it's under attack. And under attack through uh, reduction or competition against human rights, uh, injustice, movements that we see across the world referring to populism, rising nationalism, and all of these seem to represent exclusion rather than inclusion. So as a group, we're very concerned with democracy, so and we would, so yes, may, uh, may, may I please. Something, uh, regarding democracy, that uh, we are concerned uh, that, uh, um, sorry, does it, uh, yes, uh, we are concerned that uh, in uh, the field of education, there is no real interest to teach democracy uh, or to um, um, uh, bring in a democratic way. And also, the whole field of education, the system of education, isn't democratic at all. It doesn't have democracy as principle uh, inside schools, universities. Uh, it loses it at the moment. Then uh, when we say that uh, it is, uh, democracy is under attack, there is a great threat to democracy. We mean this situation. And so as a group, we are enthusiastic to, to see democracy either being restored or reclaimed, especially for the life of teachers, where teachers don't simply become technicians, but they become artists and able to make their own judgments as they engage with the younger generation and how best to engage them through uh, a choice of pedagogical approaches, teaching approaches, rather than uh, simply transmitting somebody else's program. Um, the, um, the idea came up that uh, perhaps through democracy, educators might be able to claim more participation rather than just be recipients of authorities telling us how to do our job. Um, and the, that was the third section. And the final section, uh, we were looking at pedagogy this morning. The manner of teaching. Huh? teaching. Uh, and teaching in a way where we value how students develop. And we've all come to value, I think, through uh, the activity that was run by our moderators, how questioning enables us, perhaps, to become better sorts of humans, able to engage with diversity of people, diversity of views, and encourage us to take a more humble approach to being a teacher as we engage with humankind. So very briefly, that was the overview. Mm. Um, and I hope I've done <laughs> a bit of justice to some of the main points that we engage with. We'd like to leave you with four ideas and uh, ask Your Holiness if you would like to respond to them mm. as you give your, your uh, keynote presentation. The, the first of these four is to ask for your opinion regarding how education policy, the official doctrine of how education should be conducted, how that might be challenged. And our aspiration after this roundtable conference is to have a world forum bringing maybe six, seven, eight hundred people together as a community of minds, as educators, to try and have a voice to challenge policy. And we would uh, really like any advice or opinion that you might be able to share with us regarding that. The second one refers to human being and how different understandings of what it means to be human are found within different education systems. And so we saw a tension here between trying to strive for a universal understanding of what it means to be a human, and in particular, a flourishing educated human, and how that still retains respect and sensitivity for individual communities and countries and how they might understand being human and therefore how education might be understood. So diversity. 
The third one that we're looking at is in our enthusiasm for democracy and the variety of ways that that might be understood, might we be limiting ourselves? So might democracy need to be added to with another dimension or another way of seeing things? Or does democracy seem to encapsulate this notion of human flourishing? And so it's one of the things that we'd like to reflect on. And the last one is we'd like to invite Your Holiness's vision of what it might mean to really be an educator, a teacher. And so those were the four points that seem to raise that we'd like to share with you. Oh, in any way, I think uh, basically education suppose you see to bring a happy life, happy community, finally happy world. But that, I think, fail. Mm. So today, including insects, birds, other animals, everyone, want, everyone you see, want a happy life, at least do not want disturbances. Certainly we human beings, same. But if you look uh, every day, television or news, I think a lot of problem. Essentially, our own creation. Why? Now, that's the question now. I think children, uh, before join education, basic human nature is very much alive. So children, they don't care. The other children, what is their religious belief? What is their nationality? What is their family uh, sort of background? So long, play together with a smile. And then here, the according scientist, many scientists, uh, basic human nature is more compassionate. It is quite logical. Seven billion human beings, including those troublemakers, <laughs> they also come from their mother. At a young age, just like young human being, uh, and received maximum uh, care or uh, loving kindness from their mother, from their friend. I usually is describing my first teacher about compassion is my mother, not my father. <laughs> father, very short temper. <laughs> I also got some punish, punishment like that. My mother, I think, uh, never show angry face, very kind. So basically, uh, because of mother's Loving kindness, we survived. And according to scientists, those children who received maximum affection from their mother, their whole life in deep insight, some kind of uh, how should they, peace or sense of security. That those individuals at the time when very young, either mother abandoned or some negative thing, then they, uh, no matter how sort of superficial, successful, in deep insight, some kind of sense of insecurity there. So that's our life started. And then, logically, we can say we are social animals. 
uh, any social animal, including uh, like birds or some animals, any social animal is the individual survival entirely dependent on the group of the sort of uh, group, group of the sort of the group. Hmm? Individual survival depend on the group. So we are social animal. Basically like that. Now, now question is, uh, if basic human nature is more compassionate and nice and social animal, then why? It's a lot of problem which essentially human being themselves created. Now, big question is education. I feel, I often used to telling people, young children, uh, before join education, the n basic nature of human, human thing, very fresh. Once they join school, at the school, not much talking about this basic value. Oh. And then, now here, uh, if I may say so, the so-called existing modern education started from the West. <laughs> so, like uh, Western world, when industrialization start, before that, I think, as far as I know, the education really carried by monastery and nunnery. Oh. So education very much uh, combined with religious faith. Then gradually, the industrialization is started. And then uh, we need a different kind of education, mathematics, and then eventually the science or these things. So it need separate education institution is necessary. So at that time, I feel more balance, moral principle mm, taken care by church. The newly developed education institution now mainly concerned about brain development, not warm-heartedness. Mm. So at the beginning, it quite well balanced, I think. Then gradually, the, we can see now, nowadays in Europe and also America, a big monastery, Christian monastery or nunnery, now empty. People not much pay attention to these things. So only education. Now education, which mm, Western world <laughs> now <laughs> develop or start, is more or less uh, material, because of that, oriented about material value. Technology and science and science and technology also then mainly meant for economy. So whole generation who come through that kind of education is now not much sort of knowledge how to keep inner peace when they experience anger, jealousy, fear, Oh, they do not know how to tackle. So people who carry that kind of education, when, when they facing some uh, emotional problem, they usually rely on drugs or alcohol. And the too much emotion, then uh, last thing is suicide. <laughs> so that is, I, I feel existing education, uh, not talk, no lesson, 
no talk, how to keep peace of mind. For that, uh, you see, in education, these days I usually see telling the uh, kindergarten level, you see, we usually see, uh, I mean, include uh, Karsadi mean hygiene of physical. We teach children. Now we should include hygiene of emotion from kindergarten level. We can ask student or young child, do you appreciate angry face or smiling face? Naturally. The answer is smiling face, including their own parent. When occasionally a parent is showing angry face, they don't like. <laughs> so the children, you see, naturally, biologically, they love human love, human compassion. Compassion means sense of concern of their well-being not self-centered, I, I, I. Children also, they know, they love I, simply. But in order to be happy I, they need sort of the positive atmosphere, friend. So showing concern, showing love to other is actually the best way to take care of yourself. Since many years, I sort of expressing that we are, including animals, uh, taking care of yourself, some kind of selfish there. Now that selfish should be wise selfish rather than foolish selfish. That means taking care of your own interest. But since we are social animal, uh, in order to fulfill your wish, Oh, you have to take care about uh, a community like that. So therefore, now education, I think, should include the education, how to develop inner peace, how to develop uh, inner strength. Now here, uh, I now may let me a little critical view <laughs> the Christian world or Muslim world when their problem, you see, including mental problem start, they only pray to God or Allah. They do not know how to tackle mind. Now here in India, over three thousand years the the concept of Ahimsa and Karuna, these are not just praying, it's dealing with our inner world. And for that, you see, this country, over 3,000 years, the practice of Shamatha, practice of Vipassana, that means single-pointed mind, uh, that shows already accept a mind is important, not just physical level. So when we talk mind, not sensorial level mind, but a mental level mind, the materialistic life only talks at the sensorial level, seeing nice and feel happy, a nice music, feel happy. Uh, so real troublemaker, anger, fear, these not sensory level, but mental level. So firstly, we should accept mind, sensory level, five minds, five consciousness, five consciousness, five consciousness. Uh, then sixth mind, which at the time of dreaming, Five senses of organs no longer working, but sixth mind is still there. So 
trouble, real trouble maker, anger, fear, you see, related with sixth mind, not sensorial. So, firstly, I think it is useful to know the map of emotion, map of mind. Uh, we should not consider uh, consciousness, mind, just one single sort of identity. No. There are a lot of sort of uh, different kind of emotion, different kind of mind. Uh, nothing to do with religion, but academic subject. So I think uh, in our education, in order to teach the hygiene of emotion, we should have more knowledge about the whole system of our mind, our emotion, then much better uh, to tackle this negative mind about to move. The person already know the whole system of the emotion. So then, much better position to deal with the negative emotion. Okay. Then no need because a tranquilizer. <laughs> <laughs> one day in Switzerland, one long journey, I stop at lunchtime on a big family. So very nice. And then after meal, I wash uh, my mouth and uh, in, in the bathroom. And then perhaps, I think, illegal. I open the casa box, a little sort of, because of the open. So, the, open so open. Oh, then I try to open <laughs> out, of, out of curiosity. Or then one bottle of tranquilizer there. So then I felt oh, that, uh, what's it, uh, because of the materially uh, successful family also need tranquilizer. <laughs> <laughs> so therefore, uh, you know, all this lack of knowledge, how to keep peace of mind. Peace of mind, not through prayer, but the destroyer of peace of mind, what is emotion? That's anger, fear, uh, ultimately, to my self-centered attitude, these things. And then also now here, quantum physics also is very useful. Some Chinese quantum physicist, some student, they notice those students who believe quantum physics, you see, they, they are sort of, I said, they grasping, they grasping at things. Oh, it's positive or negative, too much grasping, something independent, sort of positive or negative. So, so it's more grasping than uh, attachment, anger, this come. So now quantum physics also now say, nothing exists as appears. Most of the destructive emotion very much based on appearances not the deeper reality. So now quantum physicists, some student notice that. That's exactly Buddhist psychology, particularly Nagarjuna, Madhimika philosophy. Uh, now, uh, I myself, now 84 year old, I think over, over now, more than 70 years, I seriously thinking this concept. Very helpful to keep peace of mind. And plus, combined with altruism. Altruism, because of the infinite love, other. So these two things, really very, very helpful. For me, best tranquilizer. <laughs> <laughs> no need external thing. 
through my own mind, I have plenty of tranquilizer. <laughs> Very useful. So these, although this information come from religious text, uh, we should take this uh, academic subject or health subject. So, so now the main thing is uh, so long uh, uh, negative emotion there. Then religion itself now a source of conflict, killing. Next, our neighbor, the Middle East, Syria, and North uh, Afghanistan. It's really unthinkable. Same Muslim, same Allah, same Quran, and five times prayer. Then, due to little sort of, I mean, different name, Shia and Sunni killing each other. Unthinkable. You see, both accept Allah, creator. So both Shia and Sunni, both, you see, created by Allah. Truly brothers, sisters, children of Allah, how can kill each other? So, the, so the, that's today's world. And then, uh, I think whole generation, because of the uh, education, materialistic education, so whole generation create materialistic life, materialistic culture. So then, there is no room about, you see, compassion, these things. So, uh, now in education, we should include uh, hygiene of emotion. The best thing is a uh, more compassionate mind, your mind, your emotion, much peaceful. And the result, now some scientists say, constant fear, constant anger is actually eating our immune system. So, uh, not based on, you see, the religious sort of, uh, text, but based on scientific finding, we can teach children the hygiene of emotion is important. A basic human nature is more compassionate. So now, education, so-called, I usually call modern education, which uh, come from Europe, mainly. How many English? Englishmen? Some English? <laughs> oh, so you. <laughs> for, for example, India, the British, or uh, is the Casa? Colonists. You see, they, they, they carry some very good work, rail, construction of railway or so on, these things. Uh, in the meantime, they introduce modern education. Now, modern India, sometimes I sort of teasing, oh, this physical, not Indian, uh, but my mind, I'm more Indian than these uh, modern educated sort of Indian. <laughs> <laughs> so therefore, now we should, uh, firstly, I think, within India, now my latest commitment is try to revival of ancient Indian knowledge, how to tackle our mind, our emotion. Then India, only I think India, you see, can do combination of ancient Indian knowledge how to tackle our emotion, then modern education combined. Firstly, uh, I already you see, committed some or is it a program uh, with the help of the local the government college hmm? uh, and also in Delhi. Now we already started some program. 
you see, education about emotion, strictly secular way, not related with religion. Mm -hmm. So, uh, firstly, I think let India is to revival this knowledge. Then, uh, I think previous century, the nonviolence concept, I think uh, mainly Mahatma Gandhiji, he really uh, show world the problem uh, can solve according nonviolent principle, no weapon. And then Nelson Mandela sincerely followed that. And then Ka Martin Luther King, totally so dedicated, nonviolent. So, so now, during the first century, I think uh, India now should show world the ahimsa related with karuna, mental level. So how to create peaceful mind, how to tackle when anger comes. These are ancient Indian knowledge. Hmm? So this uh, should revive. My latest, my commitment is try to revive ancient Indian knowledge and combine with modern knowledge. So we already have some program. Uh, so eventually, I think, uh, I think within this year, we can start the teacher's training mm -hmm. about, about mind. Uh, there we have some special sort of books about the variety of emotion, variety of mind. So Luri said, Kasari. Study of mind. So, uh, so then, uh, within India, this is nothing you see new, just a revival of thousand-year-old India's knowledge, and then combined with modern education, modern knowledge, then show the world, as previous century, show the world ahimsa, nonviolence. So similarly, now, in uh, in future. In this century, I think India's uh, rich knowledge how to tackle our emotion. Uh, that I think we can uh, we can make some significant contribution. So, so in any way, now education mainly deal with brain, but that education. Uh, utilize for construction or destruction related with motivation. Like uh, immense sort of uh, has the power of weapon, including nuclear bomb. You see, use this intelligence, human, uh, but lack of moral principle. So, oh. Uh, wonderful brain must combine with warm-heartedness, sense of responsibility. And then the Westerner, as, it, as far as their sort of religion, uh, believe you see creator, very powerful. We all, all created by one God. That's like our father. That father, nobody say God is full of anger. No. God, uh, whether Allah or Jesus Christ or Buddha and uh, Shivaji, so on, everybody say God is infinite love. So that's our father. We all children of that father who have infinite love. So Western world, if you truly believe the uh, cr creator, Jesus Christ, infinite love, uh, how can you kill each other? 
First World War, Second World War, unthinkable. If you see, seriously think, creator, we all children of one father, how can? So therefore, uh, so, so ultimately, now education, combination of uh, what's the uh, brain, wonderful human brain, and with help of human brain, we can develop infinite love. Other animal cannot do because uh, lack of brain. We only human being, we have the ability to develop that loving kindness infinite way. So now education, uh, existing education, not adequate. I think most of the troublemaker on this planet, I think as far as the modern education is concerned, they all have very good modern education. But that education uh, become uh, the disposal of jealousy, fear, attachment, uh, and anger. So that's my view. Now some further question. Second question, Kare. Uh, thank you very much, Your Holiness. Um, I'd like to open uh, the questions up. Sorry, Margarita. Now, this kind of sort of at the meeting is a clear indication. A number of sort of educa educators begin to feel existing education system not adequate. So that's a wonderful sign. So now this, mm, this is, I think, hopefully, they from different places and annually should discuss. And first, we put big question. The, our society with modern education, uh, the situation whether satisfy or not. The democracy or this different system. This is basic motivation and combined with sort of the wisdom here. The religion also become troublemaker. So all political system, original motivation is very good, like socialism or democracy, wonderful. But they carry that system, person, lack of moral principle, and lack of sort of the brain ability, then short-sighted, not thinking, long-term interest. So recently, I sort of expressed a little criticism with great respect, American president. Now, <laughs> when, when he became president, he mentioned America first. I don't like that. America, leading nation of free world, should think the free world, global level, not think just America as a leading nation of free world. So just think America, small. Then finally, his own family. <laughs> <laughs> so this, we can't blame individual, but these people, you see, come from modern education and modern materialistic culture, uh, society. So we can't blame them. Like that. So uh, without sort of brain, we can't see the long-term purpose. Long-term purpose. Long-term purpose, long-term interest. 
short-sighted, like that. And then, without warm-heartedness, then even your family eventually ruined. So uh, education, uh, nothing to do with religion. Uh, India's now tradition, secular. No religion, without religion. Just, you see, use our common sense. Uh, that's very good, India's tradition, secular. So non including now, today's uh, world population, about, s about sev 7 billion. Uh, one billion non-believer. Among the six billion, suppose believer, but also sometimes troublemaker. <laughs> All these, you see, happen because of uh, lack of the, uh, not only knowledge, but moral principle. Because education system, something lacking, just materialistic education. Okay. <laughs> no next question? Any, any <laughs> argument? When you are dinner, she won't be taking a little so we're not. Me, the Rahin, that somebody so we're resting. Terrible. Me, Rahin, the Amira, he didn't come to me, but I'm in the Mongoji. You're what? I think the human nature different level. Deeper level, we human being, social animal. As I mentioned earlier, seven billion human beings born from their mother, received maximum affection. Without that, they can't survive. That's the basic human nature. And as I mentioned earlier, the scientists also now saying basic human nature is more compassionate. Next. I do not understand. Is there something that is missing in a democratic approach to education? You will need something in addition. Huh? I think a basic human value, social animal, in order to receive maximum benefit to yourself, should take care about other, because we are social animal. That is the, the principle of democracy. So then, different name, that's something different. Next. According to your vision, what does it really mean to be an educator or teacher? I don't know. <laughs> 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 well, as I mentioned earlier, teacher's training, important. Teacher should have, you see, the holistic view, this knowledge. Then teach student. I think naturally, uh, I think teacher who usually, you see, showing real care of student, sense of sort of responsibility, and showing love, then children, always happy to, uh, to, to participate classroom. If the uh, teacher uh, may be a great scholar, but without a smile, always in your face, <laughs> then the student is don't care, isn't it? Uh, my own case, when I study the difficult subject, my tutor keep one whip, so that uh, the the time of that lesson comes, whole sky become dark. <laughs> <laughs> that gradually, you see, I also, you see, then 
uh, uh, better knowledge. So my teacher always shows smile. So then I feel much happier. <laughs> oh. You know, there is one thing which bothers me for more than 50 years. Um, that is the question of violence. Violent, hmm? Violence. Violence, yes. Violence against nature, against other human beings, war, and you mentioned it, and also against ourselves. And um, you, you know uh, Johann Galtung and some other people. We founded um, 50 years ago a commission of peace education in the International Peace Research Association. And so the issue of peace uh, is one which uh, is important in my, my life. And I'm just wondering how you go about violence. Uh, you know, there was one way of dealing with violence that relates to the, as UNESCO said, to the spirit and to the mind of people. Mm -hmm. But violence is also in institutions, in the international system. And I'm just wondering how, mm -hmm. how you, would you go about Basic dealing with nature, violence? Basic human nature, as scientists say, yeah. are more compassionate. Yeah. And then our daily experience, oh, anger comes or jealousy come, destroy it, our peace of mind. Oh, not only create a problem for other, but they themselves, you see, suffer a lot. So knowing these things, then uh, you get conviction, nonviolence, ahimsa, nonviolence is the proper way to deal problem. So, as a human society, different interests or uh, different views always there. Uh, but then, basically, all human brothers, sisters, whether we like it or not, we have to live on this planet. And then also now, Glo global warming become quite serious. So recent uh, month, I have some sort of meeting, including some Chinese ecologist. One one Chinese ecologist. Now the, he mentioned, oh, within next. Uh, seven, eight decades, world may face end. So now global warming is very serious. In Mongolia, now, uh, uh, the other day I heard, you see, uh, the snowfall much less. So many animals dying. Uh, now in India also is a facing problem. America also now, the weather condition, unpredictable. All this, you see, uh, due to global warming. So when I heard, you see, the, the Chinese ecologist, now within next few decades, the uh, possibility of uh, world become desert. So then I thought, I already, 84, I have no worry. <laughs> <laughs> but those young, younger one and your children, I think have to think seriously, global warming. So whole world. Now, Afghanistan, previously, we can see there are many lakes, now desert. So Tibet also now, uh, decade by decade, the water resources less and less. And in Siberia, what well, was the climate condition? The global warming in Siberia, it becomes serious or not? Also, they feel. Mm -hmm. Yes, also they feel uh, the difference in Siberia now. Mm -hmm. Also. So, so the. Uh, global warming is very, very serious. 
But the American president, you see, he don't care. <laughs> Otherwise, you see, a number of sort of people now thinking they reduce use because of the coal, 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 and solar energy, and wind energy. That's very good. Some uh, industrialized nation, you see, use coal and these things, and then affect whole world because uh, of the experience. So that additional problem. If they, uh, now I'm I'm Buddhist. Uh, according Indian uh, few tradition, Jainism, Buddhism, and one part of Sangya Sangyaism, no creator. Uh, uh, rest of the religion have the concept of creator. So now we have to complain to creator. Why global warming? <laughs> 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 I think uh, I think it's God also should have some I think plan so world created uh, then certain limitation of life of that world <laughs> so in any way because of the global warming very serious then you see taking care about you see global warming I think we each individual should have that concept. Since many years, you see, I, uh, I never sort of take kasa, kasa, the ka, or the thungbi thungbi, tap tap, but bath tap I never use, just a shower. Suppose you see protection of water, but shower two times. <laughs> one in morning, one in evening. <laughs> I never sort of, because of the use the because of the, the, and then when I passing through, uh, to uh, in previously to railway, uh, uh, some station water just you see go like that. I feel very uncomfortable. Now India, the water shortage, some area. Really, some area too much water. So this uh, global warming is beyond our control. So quite serious, quite serious. So sometimes uh, I think our lifestyle, I think necessary to change, to modify according to the, the reality. Whew, in Africa, a lot of people. Some area too dry, some area too much water. Very sad. Hmm. I, I, I agree completely with what you've said about climate and, and also about the education of emotion. I have to, I have to just get in one kind word for a, a tr traditional education, public education in the United States. I think the one thing that was a very strong focus of our system from the beginning of it was to, we had uh, huge flows of immigrants. Hmm? In, we had uh, huge flows, many, many immigrants from all many parts of the world. And a focus of our public education system was to try to bring them together as young children. So they would, as you say, mm -hmm. they would play together, they would get to know each other when they were very young and, and grow into believing in themselves as one people. So um, I'm wondering if you think there's a role also for educating, doing what we can to try to bring different kinds of children together, to educate them together in, in our institutions. Now, refugee. Uh, in big number, is also problem. In Europe, uh, number of sort of the because of Islam seeker from Africa, from Northern Africa, and Middle East. So reject completely this 
uh, immoral. Should take, uh, should take them, provide facility, and in the meantime, not just for temporary, they give them uh, facility for their children education and health, and then the younger generation give them some sort of training. Eventually, they should return their own original country and rebuild their own country. So, uh, if possible, when they return their own land with certain equipment to rebuild their country. Otherwise, it's a whole, uh, I mean, the people, difficult area, all, you see, went to other country. That also not uh, practical, not realistic. I feel that. So America, uh, oh, many years ago, one occasion in America, one meeting, oh, in Europe, in Germany, uh, one uh, red Indian spiritual leader sent a message, uh, and that message mentioned all white people should expel from American continent. <laughs> America, American continent belongs to red Indian. <laughs> Uh, that, that also, you see, extreme. If it's the white people uh, from America expel, then I think that huge land, I think the native people cannot manage, I think, well. So now here, in this case also, you see, the, I'm sort of trying to promote through education. Seven billion human beings are same human being. Mentally, emotionally, physically, we are the same. So we need oneness of seven billion human beings. So with that sort of feeling, with that belief, wherever I go, I always feel same human brothers, sisters, no differences. So if I too much emphasis, I'm Tibetan, I'm Buddhist, oh, I'm something different. Then when I visit different places, and actually uh, in my emotional level, I become very isolated, lonely person. But when I feel we are same human being, same human brother, sisters, with that feeling wherever I go, no barrier. So we really need a sense of oneness of seven billion human beings. So in any way, uh, we are social animal. Uh, our individual's future depends on the uh, community. Now in modern time, now today, 21st century, I think whole world, seven billion human beings, actually one community. Human beings, one community. So I feel the sense of oneness of seven billion human beings and take care of other. Take care of other is the best way to fulfill your own happiness. Here you see, Buddhist concept, usually we say, all sentient being, a mother sentient being. Uh, in reality, the limitless galaxies, different sort of sentient being there, this is also mother sentient being, but no connection. Only this world, this planet. Within this planet, limitless insects, uh, different lives, we can't do anything. Only seven billion human beings, different language, but we can communicate because same human brain, same human heart. So uh, I dedicated my life as a one of the seven billion human beings uh, 
try to create compassionate 7 billion human being through education, not necessarily to rely God, but through our own education, use our own brain. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, you told us that the child before education, hmm? the child, child. Hmm. before education, happy, play with others, compassion, caring. Adults, after education, not compassion, not happy. Mm -hmm. So the conclusion is that it's not that teachers you should teach children, but teachers should learn from children. Children mm -hmm. should teach As teachers. we already discussed, existing education system is not adequate to bring happy individual. So education should include education, as I mentioned earlier, right from the beginning, hygiene of emotion. And then in education should include education about this, how say, the inner world within this brain. There are so many minds, so many emotions, these should learn. In many occasions, now, over, now uh, about 40 years, I have serious discussion with scientists, mainly uh, cosmology and new biology, and then uh, physics, particularly quantum physics, and then uh, psychology. Marve, Marve, Shivati. So, uh, very useful to learn each other. So therefore, the, uh, so the scientist, when uh, psychology, when we discuss, then they very much appreciate to learn more about mental system according ancient Indian sort of tradition. We are students of ancient Indian knowledge. I usually say teaching Indian. Hmm? The traditionally Indian, our teacher, uh, we are student. But now today, <laughs> doubt. <laughs> ancient Indian student, I think a better knowledge than ancient our teacher, Indian. That also the Britisher. <laughs> you, I think, completely neglected about India's traditional sort of value and knowledge about mind. In this respect, I also have some sort of, how to say, Kasoda, different view. Gandhiji, wonderful, really, but uh, he totally committed ahimsa, ahimsa non-violence, wonderful. But then his knowledge about ancient Indian sort of uh, knowledge, the system of mind, emotion, whether he sufficient knowledge or not, I doubt. But the Nehru, not much knowledge, these things. <laughs> Bo looks like westernized, but uh, the Nehru, very, very kind to us, very helpful, really helpful. And I received a lot of uh, realistic advice from him. Wonderful. But his knowledge about the ancient Indian, uh, or the deeper sort of knowledge, I doubt. And uh, Radha Krishna, looks, you see, uh, better, but a deeper level, I doubt. So we Tibet, Tibet in Tibet, 20, 30 years study this ancient Indian knowledge. As I briefly mentioned before, so uh, 
I am one individual human being who hold my life, the difficult life. Age 16, I lost my freedom. Age 24, I lost my own country. There are a lot of problems. But during this uh, difficult period, the ancient Indian thought immense help to keep peace of mind. So, so you see, we, I, through my own experience nowadays, ancient Indian knowledge is how to keep, how to tackle our emotion. It's immense helpful. So, democracy said. So, ultimately, our motivation and combine uh, sincere, warm heartedness, but dull here is not also is not much useful. So brilliant brain and warm heartedness combine, then very good, then become very useful, very good. Yes. Um, actually, if uh, somebody is uh, a real educator. Um, the uh, such teacher who wanted to become a teacher. Uh, those uh, educators, those teachers, they try their best, many of them, they try their best uh, uh, to uh, upbring children or students uh, in morality, to teach them uh, uh, life uh, as uh, human beings should live. They try their best, but they cannot find a room for uh, such uh, their attempts. Uh, they are completely su uh, suppressed uh, in this system of education which we have nowadays. I mean that many, many of them, they try uh, to do uh, also their own lessons of moral uh, education. They do. And there is a lot of different uh, uh, directions of moral education, value education, and upbringing uh, uh, traditions in different countries and moral education as such, uh, so, so on. But there is no room for that because uh, the only... The, uh, because the main demand for them is uh, to give such results which could be counted by this system. And in these frames of this Hmm? System, this policy, this policy became now the global one, not only in US, not only in Europe, but also in India, in Russia, True. everywhere hmm? educators suffer by themselves hmm? first. They want to do their best. They cannot to do their best as educators. Do you believe that uh, our uh, initiative can uh, be successful and uh, we can really come to our result of this World Forum of educators from uh, global, uh, globally, and we can really influence mm. educational policy, policy of education. Do you believe in that? Some university in Delhi, hmm? I think uh, annually can arrange this kind of meeting. Uh, and expenses, Dalai uh, must trust is he can make some Hmm? I'll hold you to that. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> so, it's been recorded. So, it's been And then, also, I mentioned we are now already sort of planning hmm, some teachers' training at Dharmsala College. Hmm. Uh, we provided uh, facility, rooms on these things. We have something. Previously, some Tibetan from Tibet. Now they are much less. So some uh, extra sort of rooms there. So it is uh, very much sort of so happy to offer. So teachers training. Could you Teachers training can be Teachers training can be Teachers training At this moment, we planned a six-month certificate course in the government college, which was just 
day before passed by the Himachal University. And it is six months course, which includes a preliminary introduction of all the ancient Indian wisdom. And that is a experiment basis. Uh, the government college in Dharamshala is going to. And then we also um, uh, give in three days or two days teachers training for the uh, secular ethics in uh, about uh, uh, 40 different schools in India. And the uh, five-day trained teachers were about, uh, uh, about uh, 2,000 teachers are covered. And it is an ongoing project. And uh, after some time, then His Holiness has visioned a kind of uh, full-time teacher's training might be conducted in Dharamshala because we have some uh, empty spaces for conducting such courses. And that is just under planning. And once the uh, experiment basis we are giving training to the uh, secular ethics, they may need some more uh, regular training who can become the trainers for the other uh, other teachers. So these are the one one projects. And at the same time, His Holiness also vision to uh, introduce the ancient Indian wisdom uh, to the uh, regular school curriculum, for which we have set up an expert committee, uh, about uh, seven uh, scholars of the various traditions. And we already make a curriculum from uh, KG to uh, class eight. And then class nine, 10, 11, we are still uh, under process. And uh, after uh, completion of this uh, 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 preparation of the courses, and uh, we are going to experiment in, uh, into the various uh, school level. And if, we, if the first uh, experiments have become successful, then we may approach to the education ministry or the boards, so it become a regular course for our daily school um, So subjects. we, I think, should fix some sort of, because of the time to be, time to Time frame. Time period. Oh, time frame. Then, uh, from foreign countries also, you see, can, can join some teachers training here. Uh, and also, you see, in Delhi, some universities, you see, some sort of period uh, when they are around Christmas period or something. You see, you can make some program and then invite from different countries. Uh, of course, limited number. Uh, I think, as I mentioned earlier, firstly, India itself now should revive these things. So. Uh, some, I think, uh, in Delhi University. Sir, can I just wanted to have a brief argument with you. May I? Mm -hmm. Because you are repeatedly emphasizing Indian tradition. Yes. And uh, also, although you uh, emphasize secular huh? and you want to go beyond religion. Yes. But at the same time, you keep uh, all of everything you say, including yourself, Your Holiness, emanate from a religious traditions. Mm. So uh, I see, um, I see the reason why you say it that you want to go beyond religion, so that it's more acceptable to everybody what you want to do in education and so on. But at the same time. Uh, considering modern society, all the violence that has been talked about, or modern media, uh, the technology, how can we build a school culture that is actually deeply religious, that is where the sacred is present? Because I think self-inquiry, self-awareness, uh, understanding oneself, meditative practices, silence, along with modern education, is equally important. So if you keep emphasizing the absence of religion, not in a ritualistic sense, I don't mean ritual and chanting and all that, or uh, Muslim, Islam or Buddhism or Christianity or Hinduism, but the spirituality, is it not also essential in education? Why do you keep 
denying that? Why do you keep talking about, I know you do it for practical reason, but at the heart of it is a religious mind. Are you not talking about a religious mind? A deeply religious, not in a particularistic sense, but in a, in a bigger mm -hmm. sense, in a deeper sense. And firstly, I think warm-heartedness, compassionate dogs, no religion, no faith. But they very much appreciate this compassionate attitude. When you uh, show dogs, uh, not only just sort of a few pieces of, of bread or something, but meanwhile, showing loving kindness, then dog very much appreciate. Uh, without that, just to give some bread, uh, they take the bread, no response. If you show them our uh, affection, so, social animal, whether we call religion or not, these deeper, or say the emotion which bring together, that's there. So we emphasize on that level. Then, uh, like I think these Nalanda masters, they are Buddhist, but they, they learn a lot of things from non-Buddhist tradition. <laughs> so religion, faith, individual business. These are our common sort of value. So we, we, we can do that. And within Buddhist, the Chitta Mantra uh, and the Madhimika, among those scholars of different school of thought, a lot of argument. In the meantime, learning each other. So, okay, no problem. I think we can make distinction, religious faith, and then certain sort of concept uh, come from religious thing. But you should take, as I mentioned earlier, kasa, uh, academic subject. Okay, no problem. This very room, I have, as I mentioned earlier, several meetings with scientists, and they learn many things from Buddhist psychology, but they remain as a scientist, no problem. And also, I, I myself describe uh, half Buddhist monk, half scientist, but still, still my sort of belief is religion. Buddha, Buddha Dharma, no problem. And then, uh, as I learned from uh, sort of Kasuta, a scientist, there is no Mount Miru. Uh, the thousand years Buddhist text mentioned Mount Miru, and the sun and the moon go like that. So some and the size of sun and moon. Uh, more or less, it's the same size. So then sometimes I jokingly express the, the text, who wrote that text, Bosuband. So when he wrote that text, his age, quite old, so his eyesight, not very good. Then cloudy day, he tried to look the size of sun. <laughs> and he found more or less same size. <laughs> So these are nonsense. Oh. Excuse me, Your Holiness. Uh, I don't want to interrupt because it's a fantastic conversation we're having. But I'm just noticing the time. Yes. I'm just wondering if we might be able to continue the conversations maybe during lunch. Yes. If that's okay, okay. for you. Um, because we are, we're pushing the time just now. Oh. Yes, and may, may I say, uh, say last word of uh, thanking Your Holiness uh, for great contribution, so valuable contribution uh, for our conference because uh, we have a lot uh, of uh, ideas to discuss during our uh, next session uh, on education. And uh, certainly from our side, as uh, philosophers of education and educators, uh, we'll take our own responsibility uh, to take care of uh, 
the system of education, policy of education in the world uh, to uh, create this room for moral education uh, in, uh, in this modern education. That is re our real responsibility and that's why uh, we will be working for this World Forum after one year, so we'll initiate it and uh, then we hope uh, after one year we'll be able to invite Your Holiness uh, to attend this World Congre uh, World Forum, which will be not just uh, 15 participants, but uh, some uh, hundreds of participants from uh, all countries. Very good. You, this lady, I know since many years, Russian. So geographically, Russia is the bridge between West and East, isn't it? Now she also now acting that way. <laughs> <laughs> So one day, this kind of meeting, I think some, oh, the uh, Moscow University, Marve. Marve. Moscow, State University. Moscow State University. Moscow State University. You see, showing special interest, yeah, and including, we call Tukdam, person who passed, uh, I mean, after death, physical remain very fresh. So some equipment already, you see, kept in Bangalore. So, so Russian uh, really you see, showing uh, a special interest. So then uh, these people from uh, different countries now really showing genuine interest. So this is interest for humanity, how to build better world, happier world, peaceful world. That's our goal. And this brilliant human brain should not use how to, how to, how to make weapons to kill other. No. This wonderful brain should utilize how to bring peaceful world, happy world. So now, uh, uh, in order to a uh, happy individual, uh, stomach, <laughs> important, food, very important. Now come. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Your Holiness, dear delegates. Thank you very much for a very meaningful uh, dialogue. Uh, please, uh, dear delegates, if you need to use the washroom before we go for lunch, you can go downstairs. Please use this door.